friends, welcome to, uh, I, I would say another episode of the Rise 45 vlog, but uh, if you've been watching my, my socials for the last couple days, you notice I've been alluding to some changes coming, so I guess it's more proper to say welcome to the first episode of what I'm now calling Coach Seth Gibson's Weekly Weigh-In. You know, I, I, you know, I'd been saying for a little bit I was going to make some changes to the cast, and you know, as we're coming kind of towards the end of Rise 45, I've been thinking about like how I was going to sort of transition this to be more of a, of a regular thing. So I don't want to quit doing it just because uh, you know, it's because the challenge is over. I mean, that would kind of defeat the point of the challenge. But I did realize that I was going to have to make some changes. And I've been thinking about that a lot. And so here we are. And uh, let's just jump right into that. That's actually what I wanted to lead off with is I kind of wanted to talk about sort of the future of the cast and some of the changes I'm going to make to it, you know, why I'm making those changes and what that means for, I guess, who, who may, whoever, whomever it may concern, which is hopefully you because hopefully you enjoy watching these. And uh, if you don't, I, I apologize. I guess uh, I'm no good at this, but uh, that's okay. I'm going to keep doing it because it's, it's a lot of fun. And like I said, I actually enjoy doing this. So... Um, first off, you know, when I started doing these vlogs for Rise 45, um, part of Rise 45 was just to help develop habits. And, and like I said, I really enjoy making video content. I've just had a really tricky time, like being consistent with it for some reason or other. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons, but, um, I realized right away, I mean, if you've been following me, you, you'll know, I, I stayed consistent doing a daily for maybe a week and a half, if that. And just because, like, I, you know, I've, I've mentioned this in other channels, but it's, it's really, really time intensive to make videos, you know, and, and I'm not even like doing crazy production yet. You know, I'm just, I'm just sitting here talking at the camera, adding a bumper and throwing it on some channels, you know, making some, some, some thumbnails and things like that. It's just the bare minimum, really. And even that for me was really tricky, you know, just because my days are kind of weird. You know, it used to be, I would, um, you know, I'd, you know, I'd do all my work in the morning, all my, all my real job work in the morning, then I'd go to jujitsu at lunch, and then I would go to the gym right after that. So I would have all my training kind of in this big block in the middle of the day. And I would get back home, I don't know, probably around four, four or five o'clock, which would give me uh, more time to do, which would give me, I'm sorry, which would give me time to kind of do whatever I was going to do during the evening, of course. When, uh, when this started, you know, Rise 45 started the 1st of January and we were, we, we had gone into our second gym closures here for no good reason in Washington state. And so I was basically, you know, training and then rather than going to the gym, I was coming home. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm just weak, maybe I'm just lazy, but I found it was a lot harder for me to come home and then work out again right away. You know, like I would, you know, I'd, you know, walk back to, walk back to the bus stop, catch the bus back over after, after, you know, lunch class. And yeah, I just, you know, when I would walk into my apartment, it was just kind of like, oh, geez, I don't want to work out right now. I want to just kind of, I just kind of want to decompress for a bit. And so I would do that, you know, I'd, you know, eat some food, drink a protein shake, whatever, recover a little bit. And then I'd probably work out again a couple hours later, but that sort of ended up pushing my workout further in the day. And so I'd be doing my workout and then I'd have to, you know, make my, my workout video later in the day. And then after that, I would shoot my, um, my, my, my vlog, my, you know, my daily and, you know, and you guys know this, you know, some of you guys who've been following, you know, you, I mean, there was a reason I was posting them so late in the day, um, was because it was literally the last thing I was doing before I went to bed. And just because I, you know, I didn't really have much time before that to kind of, I, mean, I guess I could have, I mean, I guess I could have shot them in that, uh, that break between coming home and working out. But yeah, again, it just, I don't know, maybe it's because I've been training more intensely, but I, yeah, I would just get home and not want to do anything. So for now, doing dailies, like I said, just is just a little bit untenable. So that's not gonna, gonna happen, but I did want to keep doing this. So, you know, doing weeklies is not super hard. Um, I mean, I haven't been great about that either. I think the last, last time I did a video was what, 10 days ago, maybe, maybe longer than that. Um, but you know, when I, when I look at kind of my schedule, when I, when I actually, I think when I, when I think to myself, Hey, maybe just make a conscious effort to do that. Uh, it's actually not that daunting. Uh, you know, I mean, Sundays are actually pretty, pretty chill days for me. So it uh, seems like a good, as good a day as any. Um, some other reasons that I kind of wanted to move to just once a week was, um, I wanted to make longer videos, uh, in case you can't tell, I actually really like talking and I'm, I'm not great at it, but I can do it. And 
it was it was kind of annoying, you know, trying to trying to like keep the video short because a lot of times I would have to just kind of cut myself off in the middle of thoughts or there were things that I wouldn't get to or I wouldn't address in a way that I felt like I felt like I had made all my points, I guess is what I'm going to say. So, um, which is a bit narcissistic, I ain't sure, but, um, I don't know. Part of that, I think, I think that's part of the value prop, right? I mean, I think, I think if I'm not giving, giving people all the information that I think, you know, is relevant to a topic, then I, I feel like I'm kind of like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sort of stealing value from you. So that's not a good thing. And, um, so I'd rather do, you know, one or two longer videos a week rather than instead of trying to do a bunch of short videos. Although... I will probably be doing that thing that I know a lot of other video content creators do where, you know, they have a long form video and they chop it down to clips, you know, so they have like a clips channel or clip sequences, especially for the Q and A stuff. I mean, I know a couple people have said, um, you know, they really like it, but you know, I don't really timestamp my videos. So, and they don't necessarily want to try and have to jump around to find the answer to their questions. So, um, so fear not if you if you've actually asked me a question uh at some point that'll i'll have a a separate clip for you that's just that that's just your question so you'll be able to uh, just go to the youtube channel or, or my igtv and get your answer right there so let's see what else um i would say the last little factor in this is that i wanted to i wanted to kind of up my production value a lot for a couple reasons so um you know, people have been asking about, uh, P or sorry, people have not been asking. I asked you guys if you, uh, you know, if you guys wanted me to talk more about, so, you know, what I called nerd stuff jokingly. And, and I say that with love because I'm a nerd, just like uh, a lot of folks are. Um, and, you know, that was very, a lot, a lot of people said yes. So, but, you know, I think if I'm going to do that properly. So, for example, one of the questions that we're going to discuss on the tech chat uh, this week is, you know, somebody asked me what I thought about kind of the various cinematic treatments of the, uh, of the of the Dune franchise, which is something that I could talk about for hours, but I'll try not to. And, you know, I figured, well, if I'm going to answer questions like that, I would like to actually have some footage from, you know, whatever it is that I'm talking about, But which means I need to figure out things like fair use, which means I need to, you know, scavenge clips. And then, of course, um, you know, I need to actually edit everything together. And like I said, if, if I'm going to do that, I'm actually going to need some, some lead-in time to be able to, you know, to, to get all the all the material together and you know do some recording and then actually you know put the clips together make good edits all that good stuff so and that, and you know and I don't mind doing that that's actually really fun I actually like making you know video edited videos I actually like kind of you know I guess telling video stories we'll call it so that's uh, that's probably the one thing that I'm most excited about and that's really the the thing that's I think I would say that and again just being able to make kind of longer form videos where I can really go deeper into subjects and not feel like I'm leaving things out. I think those are the two, the two big things. Then of course, just like I said, just the consistency thing. So that's in a nutshell, that's the future of, like I said, what I'm calling, what I'll be calling the weekly weigh in. Um, other than that, not much is going to change. It's just going to be longer videos. Uh, but you know, I still, you know, I'd still love to get people's input. You know, if you have a question you want me to address, I, I'd love to get that from you. And there's a million ways you can get it to me. You know, I put out, you guys know, I put out um, calls for questions on my, on my IG all the time. You can DM me, you can, you can email me, you can hit me up on any of the social channels if there's just anything you want to hear me talk about and I will probably do it. So cool. Um, let's see, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, of course, uh, big thanks to FNX for, for putting on Rise45 and you know, giving me a reason to do all this. Um, and actually, if you stick around to the end, I've actually included my discount code for FNX if you want to try some of their supplements. And wanted to shout out a new uh, new, new brand partner that I just started working with. So a local local CBD and a hemp distributor, I guess kind of curator uh, called a Cascadia Hemp Company. So they, you know, they reached out to me a little while ago, said, hey, we like your stuff. We'd like to work with you a little bit. You know, they sent me some products to try. And, uh, unbe you know, I don't know if, I don't really talk about it a lot, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a CBD guy. I've been using it for a bit. I guess, I mean, it's the thing you do if you're a, if you're a grappler, right, is the joke. Um, and, of course, like everything, you know, it's a supplement. It's not, you know, I'm not one of those guys that, uh, I, I think the joke I've heard is that, uh, CBD is the new ibuprofen for some people, and that's not that's really not how it should be. But you know, I've definitely had some good success with it. Uh, in fact, 
the thing that uh, I'd say surprises me most is actually the topicals, which maybe just goes to show how ignorant I am as far as like how, how our skin works, which is kind of scary because it's, as everybody says, it's the biggest organ on your body. But uh, actually I've been using, um, I don't know if you can see this, let's see, I've been using, uh, so this stuff right here, this cannabis basics, this, and then, uh, they have this stick that I've been using too. Really good stuff. Um, and I don't know. I've been, like I said, we've been, we've been ramping a lot of our training up at jujitsu just because uh, some of us are going to tournaments here. And so I'm definitely feeling that. Uh, so I got to say, it's really nice to, it's really nice to have something that I can just kind of slap on for a little bit, you know, before I start to do my, my decompression, my mobility work. And, um, you know, it just kind of takes away some of that initial bite. So if, again, if you stick around to the end, I've got a, a discount code you can use with a Cascadia Hemp Co. And that's, I think it's something for, it's for like 15% off of your whole order. And the cool thing about Cascadia is they have a bunch of different products from a bunch of different local growers. So, you know, you're supporting some small businesses, you're supporting local growers, and uh, hopefully you're doing something good for yourself. Um, all right, cool. So product placement aside, Let's jump into the meat of the video. So the first thing, of course, I'm still going to do Rise 45 updates for the next, I guess, till April, really, because I'm actually going to do another another uh, round of Rise 45 after the initial 45 days, just because if I, you know, two back to back, that's 90 days. That's a quarter. I like to line my training up on quarters. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd say it's been really good this this last week. Um, I it. I, I know I say this a lot and uh, this is not an excuse. This is just how it is. I, it was more, again, it was, more, it was more the spirit of the challenge than the actuality of the challenge. I didn't actually do many of the workouts. In fact, you know, you notice I didn't post any workout videos this, this past week, um, mainly because uh, part of it was work. Uh, work was, you know, we're actually doing some in sessions next week. So uh, being in sales, that means you have to kind of clear your calendar, which means I had to basically everything that I would have done next week, I had to kind of do this week. So it was basically, it was get up very early in the morning, be on calls literally all morning, go to jujitsu, rush back, be on calls all afternoon. And so most of my, um, most of my workouts was just mobility work, uh, decompression work, which is good. Cause I really needed it because like I said, we've been training a lot harder and it's just going to continue. I think I, I kind of jokingly mentioned I'm in a, a bit of a fight camp because we have a tournament April 3rd, which I'm really excited about. So, but that said, you know, um, I did actually hit all my workouts, you know, I did go to all my grappling sessions. So and that's, again, the spirit of the program, you know, I was able to work out every day, I was able to hit my hydration goals, my nutrition goals, uh, my sleep goals, my sleep has actually been really good. Um, I think now that I've figured out what kind of how I need to sort of keep everything at what level I need to like, you know, make sure that I drink enough water during the day, make sure that I'm taking enough electrolytes, make sure that I'm eating enough. And, um, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're kind of rounding the rounding third base here. You know, we we just finished up week five. So week six, it's, it's really just week six. And then a couple more days after that. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been, it's been really fun. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I've really enjoyed connecting with the community and, um, yeah, I, and just, just to kind of step back from that a little bit, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this just because I'm doing brand ambassador work for FNX. I, I really, really appreciate what they're doing. Um, so as some of you guys know, uh, they have, they have two tiers of ambassadors. And, uh, so, you know, there's the kind of the, the initial ambassador tier, and then they have what are called elite ambassadors. And I'm part of the elite ambassador program. And we actually got to jump on a call, uh, a legit zoom call with, uh, with the founders and the program managers, uh, this week. And they were kind of talking about some of the plans they had for the program, you know, things like uh, having training camps for the elites and some other cool stuff. And, uh, I gotta say, it's it's pretty neat. You know, I've been involved with other fitness brands and other fitness orgs that I think have, you know, I'll say asked for a little more and given back quite a bit less. And so, so it's kind of cool to see that you know they're not just they're not just using you know the the ambassador program as just just to have people getting their product up. I mean, sure, that's what we're doing. I mean, we are. I mean, you guys, you know, you see FNX all over my stuff. I mean, if you you know if you look at the bumpers, uh, if you look if you, you know, I mean, I I tag them in all in a lot of my IGs. You know, yeah, you'll see me throw stuff on my stories about the supplements. But you know, the reason I jumped in with them, and, and I think I talked about this in one of the earlier vlogs, and just to reiterate, was. You know, I got a good feeling from the company, and the more I talk to them, the, um, the more that I actually get to interact with the folks there. I, you know, the more that, um, yeah, the more that I think I was not wrong. Um, so, and uh, you know, when we, I think, 
they have, you know, they're, they're, we have some of the training camps actually coming up in a couple months. So I'll definitely document all that, you know, show you guys how that works. And, um, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that. So that's, that's the Rise 45 update. Um, general training update, like, uh, I, I think I, I pretty much covered all of it. But, yeah, the exciting news is uh, tournaments, you know. I mean, thankfully, the rest of the world is not being as heavy-handed and silly about all this lockdown stuff as Washington is. So it means, you know, we have a chance to get out and compete. Um, so a couple of us uh, from Tempe Seattle are going to hit up... Um, I think we're going to Montana. April 3rd will be in Helena for Grappling Industries. And then we'll be in Boise May 1st for, again, for Grappling Industries. And, you know, after that, who knows? But, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a pretty full schedule. I mean, you know, like I said, all the other orgs in other states are, you know, are, I guess, open for business. So if that means I have to travel, well, I, that, that's fine. I guess that's what I'm doing. Um, so, so, yeah, so it means, you know, no more, you know, I mean, I haven't been skipping days at jujitsu, which I'm really excited about and just means, and now I just have more reason not to, um, you know, I need to, need to start doing more roles, you know, like this week, um, I didn't, I didn't do any sparring this week, which, uh, which I'm kind of ashamed of. Um, you know, I, my, my goal is to spar at least twice a week. Well, actually it max out at twice a week. Cause like I said, I want to treat it kind of like interval training. So get, you know, two weeks or sorry, two sessions a week of just, you know, good, get, get a good three or four rounds in every session. And, you know, I've actually found that not rolling every day and, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, of course, duh, that makes sense. You know, if you're, if you're a sports scientist or if you're, you know, a sports psychologist, this is going to make sense to you. But, and, and this is something that, I, that I've, I've read all the research on and I've, and I've kind of, you know, read the literature on, but actually seeing it in play out is really interesting. But um, point being, but sorry, so what I'm, what, I, but what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that I've noticed that not, not rolling every day, not just killing myself every day, I feel like I've actually, I'm actually retaining, well, I know I'm retaining more. And two, I'm able to actually look back on my roles and think, see what I did and see where I can, you know, and actually take things from the roles, you know, cause it used to be, I mean, there was a time where, you know, I remember when I first started jujitsu, especially like I was, I was rolling every day and I, I just didn't get anything out of it. Like, you know, even as I got better at it, I, I think it was just because of the grind, but I couldn't, I was having a hard time holding on to techniques from class, holding on to, you know, taking things from the roles. But now, you know, I, when I, when I spar, I remember what I did. I, I, I mean, I, I'm actually more present when I'm sparring, so I'm thinking more about setups. And some of that, yeah, is just experience. But honestly, I think a lot of it, too, is just that I'm not, you know, I'm not just completely blown mentally. Um, and and I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing a bunch of other carry over there, too. You know, for example, you know, I, I started watching uh, the, the, uh, the 10th Planet videos. I'm mastering the system. So, uh, if you, if you, so 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Online, you know, if you subscribe to them, they have a series of videos that are basically just taken from Eddie Bravo teaching class. And, you know, when I, when I initially subscribed, I watched some of them and didn't get much out of them. Just because, like, I, I understood the movements, but I was like, I have no context for this. But now... I can actually watch those movements and say, oh, okay, I, I actually understand the context. And part of this, like I said, is experience, but I think a lot of that comes from A, just that I've been drilling more, and B, because, again, because I'm not completely shot mentally from, from you know, super hard sparring, um, I'm able to kind of form those contexts for myself. So that's, that's kind of cool. So, I, you know, I would... I'm not a sports psychologist. I'm not a sports scientist, you know, full disclaimer. So I'm, I'm not trying to step out of my lane. But uh, if, you know, if, if you've been having some, you know, if, if you feel like you've been having some mental blocks training, I would say maybe actually scale it back a little bit, you know, spend a little more time drilling, spend a little more time studying, and maybe spend a little less time doing like really, really hard skill practice, you know. And when you do, make your skill practice focus. That's another thing I've noticed about rolling now is, it's, it's much easier for me to go into a role with somebody and say, okay, these are the things that I want to hunt for. And a lot of times it actually works. So for example, you know, I'm trying to play a lot of truck game or, uh, there's, um, <clears throat> there's this move that, uh, Nate showed us when he was preparing for CJJ. I call it roll the bones, but, uh, I don't know what he calls it, but it's, it's basically just kind of the, well, I'm not going to describe it. Um, I'll, maybe I'll post a video of it at some point, but there's all these movements that have started to stick with me better just through the drilling. And when I go into a role now, um, I'm able to, like I said, actually start to hunt for those and really look for setups. And again, part of that is just experience, but 
again I, but like i said i i attribute a, it a lot to just having my just having more more of that kind of mental space to work in you know more of that mental energy to work with because you know i'm not just going to class and gassing myself you know running myself into the ground every day so um that's a, that's a general training update. Um, I mentioned, you know, I'm going to be going, you know, starting another round of Rise 45 uh, in 15 days, I guess. But no, sorry, 10 days. And uh, hopefully, I don't know, hope, hopefully like the gym will have, you know, you know we'll, we'll be in another phase by then. The gym will have laxed up a bit. I won't have to wear a mask when I'm training because I, I do want to start doing a little more hypertrophy work again. Um, just because I'm starting to shrink in a bad way and I don't like that. But uh, I am losing, I'm losing weight, which makes me happy. And, uh, but I, I feel like I want to go into more of a, a bit of a recomp, I think, because I noticed, um, and uh, was it Coach Thibodeau? I believe it was Coach Christian Thibodeau said something about this a while back. He, you know, he said he noticed that anytime he would either be really lean and, you know, lean and muscular or, you know, not so lean and muscular, he would still be about in the same weight range. I've noticed that for myself. I tend to, you know, I tend to be anywhere between 200 and about two, 215 when, when, you know, when I'm kind of at, I guess, in some sort of homeostasis. And I'm, I'm almost wondering if, well, I'm not wondering because I'm going to do this. I'm thinking it's going to be an, an interesting experiment to, to, to see if I can obviously long-term recomp a bit, uh, and stay within that 200, 215 range. And we just kind of see how I feel because, um, I actually feel really comfortable at that weight. Like when I was down, when I was down to one, I, I would say, what I was under 190 at the end of, at the end of last year and looked really good. I felt kind of like crap. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't feel awesome at all. Um, but, uh, I actually feel decent right now, even on the kind of lower calories that I'm at. So, yeah. So I guess I guess corollary to the training, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do a little bit of recomp. Try and yeah, I think the uh, the weight class that I signed up for was 210. So which which I think is a little optimistic. I'm probably gonna be at the at the uh, lower end of that spectrum. So that'll make for some interesting <laughs> interesting rules. But um, yeah, but we'll see what happens. So. I think that's all I have to say about training. Yeah, so I was gonna talk. Yeah, talk a little bit about. Oh, I did want to talk a little bit about my diet. Um, I'm still doing the, uh, the f I guess more of the animal based thing. So I kind of moved away from the pure carnivore. Like I, I think I mentioned this a couple of times, but um, I'm really actually enjoying doing the animal based eating because you know it means I get some carbs around training, which is really nice. And and it's all like it's all natural carbs. You know, it's all fruit. Um, I'm not I'm not taking any carb supplements right now, although. Uh, I might try one. Actually, I know I know FNX just put out a new a new uh, kind of intro workout carb supplement, so I might I might try that. But um, yeah, I would actually recommend this way of eating. Um, I really like it. You know, I, I like the whole eating animal products. You know, meat, eggs, some dairy because I'm lucky and can tolerate dairy. And then of course, um, I eat a bunch of fruit. I mean, I only eat you know berries, you know blackberries, blueberries, figs, dates, things like that. Um, and then kind of the more non-sweet fruits, you know, squashes, uh, eat some avocados, but yeah, it's, it's really fun. Um, that's, I know that's a weird thing to say about a diet, but it, uh, I would say it's actually really fun. Cause I get to eat a lot of stuff that I like and I actually feel really good on it. So, um, yeah, I don't know if, if you're in kind of a diet rut, maybe that's something to try. Uh, if you're curious about kind of what that looks like, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, again, I'm not a nutritionist or an RD or consultant, but uh, you know, I've studied a lot of, of kind of sort of what's, what goes into the whole animal-based thinking, and I'm pretty comfortable talking about it. So yeah, so that's that. Uh, I think that's that's training talk. Um, so let's 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 get to the fun stuff, I guess. Uh, well, the other fun stuff, the, uh, the 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 nerd stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna call this. Maybe let's call it tech talk. Maybe let's call it nerd stuff. But um, so uh, I'm I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I guess the first question I had that I that I thought was interesting was. Uh, was my buddy Miguel, uh, and we talked about this uh, between ourselves, but I thought this was such a great question. I kind of wanted to share some insight with everybody, but his question was uh, things that I wish I had, hadn't had not done uh, coming up in my career, my, uh, um, in my career as a, as a software engineer, software developer. And for those of you who don't know, um, yeah, my day job is actually in the tech industry, and I've been in the tech industry for, let's see, I started in 1996. 
2005, literally the day I graduated high school. So I had a job building networks. Um, and so, yeah, so I've been in, in, involved in the tech industry in some way, shape or form for, yeah, for about 20, what does that, what does that make it? That makes it 24, 25 years, 25 years. Yeah. So, and a, a big chunk of that, I mean, I'd say the last, let's see, it is 2021. So I'd say the last 19 years has been as a, as a software, as either as a software developer or as adjacent to software development. And uh, yeah, a lot of things, and, and I've learned a lot of things. I've done a lot of cool things, done a lot of stupid things. Um, nothing career killing, thank God. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's an interesting question. Things I wish I had done and hadn't done. And I would say, I'm actually going to spin that around and say, here are the things that I think you should do. And, <laughs> you know, don't do, do, learn from my mistakes, right? Um, and some of these things I actually did. And the cool thing about this is, I think this works for most careers. Um, I mean, ultimately, it does kind of depend on how much room you have to maneuver in what directions in, in your chosen field or career path. But, um, and, and I'll try and, I'll try and use examples that are, I guess, are applicable to general. I guess general jobbiness, for lack of a better term. Sorry, yeah, that was super eloquent. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I would say, all right, forget everything I just said. What I'm I, so let me just start by by telling you the things that I did that I think worked. Um, so now, if you're coming up, so say you're a younger person or you're at the beginning of a career path, and again, like I said, you have some room to maneuver, not just within the career path, but I mean, literally like in the world, like you're free to kind of travel, you're free to move around, you're free to kind of do your own thing. I would say the thing that I did best that really served me well was taking, taking interesting opportunities when they presented themselves and, you know, kind of not really, not really worrying about, let's, let's say what, what I'll call short term, I don't even know what the, what, I don't, I don't know what to say, but let me give you an example. I know, yeah, me, me, it's funny. I, I think I opened this by saying, yes, I'm really good at talking and here I am not being good at talking. Um, so, so example. So when I was, when I was starting out in the tech industry, I moved around a lot. Um, and I, I feel like if I hadn't done that, I would not have had the opportunities or been able to take advantage of the opportunities that I did. Um, you know, being able to say, hey, that there, there's an interesting job there. Oh, but it's in California. Okay, well, I guess I'm moving to California. Oh, there's an interesting job. I guess I'm moving back to Seattle. Oh, I guess I'm moving to SoCal. Oh, I guess I'm moving to Portland. Um, I mean, I like traveling anyway. You know, I grew up traveling. So, but I, I think if you have, like I said, if you have that, that room to maneuver, take opportunities that you think are going to be interesting and beneficial to you even if it means having to make some life changes like that, because, you know, you're going to, you know, the experience is invaluable. You're going to meet new people. You're going to get the experience of maybe living in a different environment, which I'm kind of glad I did, you know, I mean, cause now, you know, moving around is not a big deal to me. I mean, I travel a lot for, well, back before the world went crazy and stupid, um, I was traveling a lot for my current job and it was just easy. You know, I'm, I, you know, it was very easy for me to travel and, you know, even if you don't end up in a position where you travel a lot, I think just being comfortable with that idea of moving around and making changes is um, is good because I, because I think you develop some flexibility from that. And I think where else that kind of manifests is it was easy for me to, I guess, jump between disciplines. So, you know, I started out building networks, then I went to building hardware. And then from there, I went into working in the games industry. And some of that was art, some of that was programming. And then I went into research and, you know, and interaction design and user research. And a lot of that was programming and working with people. And then I went into went back into hardware, but it was hardware development. So, you know, I think if I hadn't, um, I, I think if I hadn't come up with, or if I hadn't come up initially in my career with that idea of, move around, you know, maneuver, change positions, change, you know, change perspective, change vantage points. I think it might have been a little tougher for me to say, oh goodness, this is a, a position that's really interesting to me, but it's not, it's not quote unquote my area of expertise. So 
maybe I shouldn't do it. Instead, it was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, well, yeah, it's a completely different skill set that I don't necessarily have all of the points for, but I think I could do, so let's just try it. And that ended up working out. I mean, you know, one of the cool things about the tech industry is there's a lot of on-the-job learning. And again, that, that might be a specific thing, you know, in your career field, you may not have that same... Um, that same room to maneuver, but that actually kind of is a good place to jump off into another thing that I think really served me well uh, career-wise, and that was just kind of having my own interests outside of whatever I was working on at work. So, you know, I was, you know, I'm the kind of person who, yeah, I do my day job and then I'd go home and work on other projects, you know, work on side projects. So if there was a, a specific thing that I wanted to learn that wasn't maybe part of my my, my kind of my daily tasks, but it was something that was, that I thought was cool. I would, you know, I'd, I'd research it myself, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, buy books or I'd read papers and I'd build my own projects. And, you know, I mean, I, th I think self-teaching is, is very powerful. You know, it's, I mean, A, you're going to stay, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to work on things that you're interested in. So you're going to be engaged and B, it's just at the end of the day, it's just another tool you're going to have in your toolbox. And you're going to be able to say, you know, when an opportunity, uh, when an opportunity that might come up that gives you, um, I'm sorry, when, an, when an opportunity comes up that you, that, that makes use of that skill set that you have now have because you spent the time on the side to actually develop, um, yeah, you'll be, you'll be ready for it versus again, versus having to say, Oh crap, I'm gonna have to pass up on that. And yeah, it, it means you're going to have to, you know, maybe prior reprioritize your time. I mean, so for example, I, um, I didn't have much of a social life coming up because that's a lot of what I was doing was, was all work related. But, um, you know, I kind of look at where I am now and sort of the freedom I have to kind of move around. Also the fact that, you know, I'm at a pretty high level, you know, I can, I can, I can work for pretty high level positions that command decent salaries. So I do okay in that respect. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the long game, right? You know, you, you know, you grind at the beginning and then you hopefully you enjoy the benefits. So, so those are the first two, I would say, you know, a, you know, B, you know, leave yourself free to maneuver and take a, take advantage of the opportunities. And, uh, number two do, you know, self-learn, you know, self-teach, you know, pursue things that are interesting to you that are, that are related. And do I have a third thing? Yeah, I'm gonna say that that dirty word that that, that uh, people don't like, but uh, I think is an essential skill. That that's network, and you know the cool thing about where we are nowadays is that doesn't mean you have to go out to events and kind of schmooze and all that. I mean, join a forum, um, you know, contribute to forum discussions, you know, post stuff on your social media. You know, I mean, I used to be really really big in Twitter, and honestly, I I got, I I would say I got a lot of opportunities, you know, do things like contribute to, you know, write mag, write, write reviews for software products for magazines or speak at, at events just because, just from posting things on Twitter, you know, like I'd post like, you know, video clips of a project I was working on or screenshots where I'd just post uh, some little interesting thing that I discovered while I was working on a project. And it's, it's really that simple. I mean, you, you know, and you can make the argument that, yeah, you don't get quite the reach anymore. Um, I, I, I'll admit, yeah, back, back in the day, like Twitter was actually useful and wasn't a cesspool of hate, but, um, there's still channels out there. I mean, you know, jump jump on some of the alt platforms. I mean, you know, or or maybe use a platform that people aren't aren't really using for that stuff in you know in a creative way. I mean, you know, you know, take advantage of the fact that you can post videos and photos on Instagram, for example. Um, you know, start your own YouTube channel. I mean, that's huge. You know, that's the kind of thing that you know you might even be able to spin into a side hustle if if, if you're doing you know if you're if you're posting interesting content. So. Yeah. And of course, do go to events. And, you know, when you're at events, kind of like I said, with uh, point number one, just be, be open to be open to conversations, you know, talk to people, um, go to, you know, I mean, so for example, if you're a game developer, you go to GDC, but go to the go to the offsite events too. you know, meet people, meet people that are maybe outside of your field, talk to people that are maybe uh, in different industries or in or, or in different arms. And, you know, stay in touch because you never know like what that's going to turn into. So like I said, I know a lot of people think that networking and is, is kind of a, is a bad word, but I, I, again, I mean, I, I would probably not be where I am because of networking. I mean, I can, I can say that for a fact, because I mean, the reason that I have the job I have right now is because I was posting things on a forum and I actually met a gentleman, 
uh, who was a student at the time. And, you know, for, on that forum, we stayed in touch. And then when he started working for the company I'm at now, um, you know, I hit him up at one point because he posted something on his LinkedIn. And I said, hey, this sounds really interesting. Is this, do you know anything about this position? And, you know, he was able to kind of fill me in and help me, you know, help me kind of get, you know, get my interview and, you know, kind of shepherd me through the process. And here I am. So, you know, that's, that's just one of the ways that, you know, that um, networking pays off. I mean, it's the obvious one, of course, but, you know, if you don't do that, you're not going to have access to that. And, you know, and let's be honest, it's just, it's just, it's nice to like talk to people. It's cool to like share things. I mean, honestly, I would not be where I am in my career if I, if people hadn't just been willing to, to share information or, you know, like, you know, give me advice on my career or give me advice on how to just solve daily problems, you know, and being able to just reach out to people and say, Hey, I'm trying to write this tool that does this thing, or I need to solve this problem at work. You know, do you have any ideas? So, you know, give a little, get a little, you know how that goes. So I'd say those are the three things that, um, I'm glad I did. And I would definitely recommend doing, um, so, you know, so networking, you know, I just said networking, uh, work on your own projects, you know, self-teach, have your own interests, and then, you know, take opportunities as they come, especially if you think it's op- if, if it's going to be beneficial to you and you're interested in it. Um, the flip to that is some things I wish I had done differently. I would say the only thing I wish I had done differently was actually an interesting corollary to kind of some of the stuff I just talked about. Um, so I actually did, I think take longer to make the jump out of the games industry than I should have because I knew for a couple jobs, like towards the end of my time in games, uh, you know, I had opportunities to get out of games and either go work in film or go work in hardware or go work in, you know, non-games but related fields. And I didn't do it because part of it was just a confidence issue. I, I didn't know if I was if I could do something that wasn't games. And the weird thing was, it wasn't even like ego investment. It wasn't even that I, that I was like, oh no, I've been in games for so long. I, I don't want to get rid of all that. It was just, oh, I just don't think I'm good enough. Um, but that kind of really led to me sort of, let's just, let, let, let's say flaming out of the games industry. And I, I don't know if anybody who knows me from that time is listening to this, but um, when I, when I left the games industry, I, I, I definitely wasn't graceful about it. You know, I mean, I, I kind of said some things that I probably shouldn't have said. Um, I was kind of a jerk to some people about just the whole industry. And so don't do that, um, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess, and, and that, that's really something I think just carries over to life, right? Like don't, don't and I know it's hard. I, I, I know this is, you know, I'm, I'm acting like it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do, but don't, especially if you know it's a, it's a situation that's not serving you and, you have a good idea that there are, that the grass actually might be greener on the other side. I mean, take that jump when you can, you know, don't, don't put it off just because, you know, you're trying to be whatever, you know, you're in my case, you're scared and you like the security or, or the, the, the security you think you have. Right. And again, I know that's not always easy, but if, if it presents itself that way, you know, if, if I mean, if, if you're to, if, if you're to, I guess a crossroads where it's like, Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing this over here, but I have the opportunity to go do this other thing that I think I would like better. You know, like I said, back to what I said at the, at the very beginning, do that. Even if it means like switching fields and switching arms and switching careers and, you know, and, and maybe even starting over a bit, because at least from my experience, you know, you're going to be, you're definitely going to be happier and you might actually find something that you're better at. You know, I mean, that was the other thing I realized was, you know, I'm as much as I can write software and I enjoy writing software. It's actually not the thing I'm best at. So, um, yeah. And, you know, and I, and I think, I think that's the big thing. You know, that's, that's, that's the only kind of regret I have slash mistake I think I made. Um, and, yeah. So there you go. You know, don't, 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 don't wear out your welcome, I guess. Um, cool. All right. On to the, 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 the third and final record here. Uh, let's talk about Dune. I think the question I got in general was, uh, I should have written it down and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go look it back up on my Instagram, but it was, uh, just which, which treatment, which of the cinematic treatments or what I'm just, I'm going to say what, I'm going to give you kind of what I think about the cinematic treatments. And the reason this is relevant is because, uh, if you, if you're a Dune fan at all, um, there's a, you know, there's, you know, that, that there's a new movie that, uh, that we're all kind of waiting with bated breath to either pop onto HBO max or whatever. 
And uh, so for, and uh, I, I, let me let me add a disclaimer too. If, if you if you're not familiar with Dune, like you you can just shut this off right now because I'm 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 gonna go. Pr I'm gonna assume that you sort of know kind of the Dune universe. I'm not going to talk too much about the Dune universe specifically. I'm just going to talk about the cinematic treatments. So I'm going to kind of assume that you sort of know some of the cinematic treatments that are out there. Um, so, so I'll talk about, so, so just to set the stage, if you don't, so there's, there's a couple things to think about. So there was the original treatment by David Lynch, which a lot of people don't like, but I actually really enjoyed. Um, and I, I mean, I still watch it if it's, you know, when it's on streaming, it's kind of one of my, one of my go-to just, Hey, I need some noise on in the background movies. Uh, then, of course, the the channel formerly known as Sci-Fi, and I say formerly known because I, I think I read somewhere that they're shutting down or they're getting sold or rebranded again or something's happening to them uh, that was once Sci-Fi and then was S-Y-F-Y, -Y, which was really weird, um, did actually two treatments. They did a treatment of Dune and then they did, they did a treatment they called Children of Dune, but it was actually a bunch of Dune books kind of sort of written together and they did that really well and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then of course there was there's the you know there's the 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 Villanova ones coming out you know for those if you're not familiar that's the the same gentleman who did um, Blade Runner 2049 which I was was it 2049 2049 the most recent Blade Runner which uh, I was actually pretty pretty excited about because I think um, I think he actually handled I know I know there are some quote unquote Blade Runner purists who didn't really enjoy the new movie but I actually thought it I thought it kind of retained a lot of the spirit of the original pretty well um you know it's kind of is is, is a very slow burn there's a lot of there's a little on the cerebral side um and i think you know basically what it kind of cemented to me was that he would be a good director to handle something like dune because there's a lot of subtext in dune and it takes a special kind of person i think to be able to translate those books to film so as far as kind of what I think about them, and this is this is fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask, you guys ask me more questions like this because I, I love talking about stuff like this. Um, so I, I'm not really sure. I, I, first of all, it's, I don't I don't have a favorite one. Um, you know, like uh, like right now, I, I like I said I really like David Lynch's Dune. There there was there was a thing I didn't like. I I think um, the whole. All right, I'm gonna get really Dune specific, and uh, it, it's it's streaming right now, so you can go watch it if you if you don't if you're not paying him what I'm saying. But there there were some things that he that, that Lynch changed that I didn't agree with, um, like the whole the whole like the the sound weapon thing. So in so in, in Dune they have these uh, in the in David Lynch's movie the <clears throat> they have this weapon that uh, that makes that they. I guess channels sound and then it turns it into a, a shockwave and, and I think I believe that was created just for the movie because I don't remember that being in the book that was what they called a, it was part of well, okay I'm not going to get too specific because then yeah. I mean if you guys want me to get like really specific about this stuff let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll be more than happy to like go like full frontal nerdity on this but but basically like the reason I didn't like it was because it he he basically invented that as a device to to sort of replace another idea in the book that I think would have looked really cool on film. And that, so I will say that was one of the things that I liked about the, um, the sci-fi treatment is they actually did kind of restore that. And some of the, some of the, the visuals they used for it were really cool. Um, and I'm actually excited to see how they handle that in the, in the new movie because I think, you know, special effects being what they are now and not, and not only that, but physical choreography and, you know, just the physicality of actors now being what it is. I think they could do really, really cool things with that. So I'm actually excited to see like, you know, things like the weirding way and kind of, you know, some of the knife fights and stuff like that. Um, so, so as, as much as, I, okay. So I will say as much as I like the David Lynch version, that kind of knocks it down a point. Yeah. I forgot about that. That, that is the one thing I didn't really like. Um, the sci-fi version, I really enjoyed. God, there's not much to say about it other than I really liked it. Um, I actually liked what they did with Children of Dune better <clears throat> because, like I said, they actually they actually took a. I think it was. I want to say it was three books. They actually took three books. It was it was two or three. It wasn't just Children of Dune. So um, there, because there were some child, there were some elements of children. There were some elements of God Emperor and. Maybe it was just those two. Um, I don't know, but yeah, and, and they actually like if, if you if you didn't know 
those other books and you watch it, 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 it watches like one story. So it, I thought that treatment was really, really good. Um, that's, and, and even if you do know the books, cause I did, cause I mean, I picked up on that when I watched it, I was like, Oh, that's actually not from children of Dune, but it's pretty cool how they segued into it. So, um, yeah, so I really liked, actually, I would say of, okay, so I would say of all the treatments so far, that one is my favorite just because it covered so much and it, and for my, in my opinion, it did it so well. So if you can find, uh, if you can find that on, I think you can actually find it on, uh, on YouTube. There's like, there's some really low quality captured versions and, and it, and it's, and it's a mini series. So it's long, like make, you know, plan some time to watch it or, you know, come back to it. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I hope, I don't know. It's a, it's a shame that somebody can't pick up the, the rights to that and re-release it. But, um, who knows, given, given, uh, the, I guess the big media company nowadays, their the penchants for making a <clears throat> mini series out of books, you know, maybe we'll see a, 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 a you know, a GOT style treatment or something like that. Although hopefully they won't, they won't shit the bed at the end as badly as they did with the GOT. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah. And as far as my thoughts on the new one, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I, I wish I, I wish I'd figured out the fair use stuff so I could put some of the, uh, the trailer footage in, but, um, I, I think it looks great. Um, I, I, you know, there, there was some, there was some casting I was a little apprehensive about, um, like, uh, who was it? No, I guess there was no, I, I know initially there was like, I, I think, um, I, um, was it the, uh, I want to say, was it Oscar Isaac? I, I want to say I wasn't completely settled about Oscar Isaac. I was thinking, I actually thought he would have been like a, a better Duncan. Um, but, you know, seeing the, the photos of him uh, from, you know, like the, from, uh, from the set, now he looks great. Um, <clears throat> anybody else? I know there's been some noise made about the, the whole kind of retconning of, well, not ret, that's not a, the proper term. Um, I, I don't know what the polite term for it is, but uh, the, the changes they made to Liet Kynes. But honestly, like, as big a character as Liet Kynes was, and I'm not saying this to be politically correct, the fact that he was a white dude like really wasn't a big deal. So the fact that that, that Liet's now a black woman is not going to be a big deal. Um, and again, I'm not saying that to be politically correct. That's just the truth. So, <clears throat> so I, I don't, you know, people who are making a big deal out of that just stop. Um, let's see. We've seen a little bit of footage of the sandworms. I think the new sandworms look really cool. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I want to see more of the Fremen. You know, we haven't seen much of uh, that's and, and rightly so, I think, because I think I think a lot of people that's a lot of people's favorite part of Dune. Um, you know, they, they've been really kind of tight lipped on all that footage. You know, I mean, most of the trailer footage, you haven't seen much of that. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess the short answer to, to the whole Dune question is children is probably my favorite treatment. I'm really excited for the new one, but I really like all of them. And like most people, I'm very sad that we never saw Jodorowsky's Dune. Um, I think that's all I have to say about that. So, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, you guys ask me more, ask me, ask me more questions about nerd stuff. Like, I want to talk about nerd stuff more. That was cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's what I got for this, the first episode of the weekly weigh-in. Um, so I'm going to get this up. Clips will be coming maybe the week following, and then we'll do this again next Sunday. So ask me questions, hit me up in, in the DMs, hit me up in the comments, and um, I will see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me. Cheers. Call me, I hear you. Cut through the noises, world of men.